Heidi Naramani with Area Artist Showcase, and we have Laird Rice with us today from Box Elder. Laird, where are you from originally? What brought you here to Fergus Falls? I grew up in San Diego, and uh, I left there in right around 90, and uh, I went to Colorado Springs. I lived there for six years and then moved here. And uh, my brother Tim was here, and uh, I thought I'd give it a try, and uh, I've been here ever since. So have you always been an artist working with woodwork? Did you do that in California? Or is that something that you picked up in you know, Colorado? I, or I've never Falls? even, you know, the word artist, I've, I've just, when I, when I work with wood, I try to do as nice as I can. And I try to, I try to, I've got kind of my own style of doing things. And I try to make it as nice as I can. And some people call it art and some people just call it woodwork, you know. Things will pick up and I'll, I'll go in that direction. It'd be nice. Uh, you've got to make a living. And it'd be nice to be, be able to make a living at doing artwork, you know, artistic woodwork. And, right. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that have, you know, been schooled and they, you know, and uh, they really, they, different mediums. And uh, as far as that goes, I just like to work with wood and make it as nice as I can. That's about it, you know. That brings me to my next question. Is okay. wood the only medium that you use? I think eventually I'd like to paint. I'd like to oil paint, maybe. And, uh, and I, I like abstract. And I love playing with color combinations. That's why when I, when I, when I do the crosses, I do there's exotic woods and I like to put the colors together and just, you know, and just see where I come out and it's, you know, it's enjoyable and, uh... Have you had any formal academic training or has this been a self-taught? This is a self-taught thing. I, I mean, I've worked as a carpenter ever since 1970 and then with, uh, I did, uh, I did a stay in the, in the Marine Corps and then got out and I went back to woodworking again and in our, not woodworking, but framing and, and, and trim work, eventually trimming houses and, and cabinets. And, and then after I st was working on cabinets for a while, I started doing my, my own furniture and stuff like that. And Okay. Yeah. So it kind of stemmed more from an occupational area. Sure, yeah. Area. Yeah. Nice. It was what okay. I knew, and, and uh, I've tried to simplify it, you know, to where I don't have any real big machinery or anything like that, but... What's what's the process for making these wooden crosses? And can did you bring oh, some with yeah, you? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Here. <clears throat> and these are, you sell these at Box Elder, correct? Yes, I do. Like this here, that's rosewood and satin. <clears throat> and then we have. Let's see here. We have different. We have some end grain, that's been inlaid, and then sateen on the on the edges, purple heart. And that's blood wood. And I just put this together. I just started putting pieces together. That's quite a compilation of different types of wood. And I was going to ask, um, you had mentioned earlier before the interview that you get some of the wood left over from the mills around the area, correct? Right. And then you polish it up and... Right. Well, can this, you take this, us through this, I got, this I got from Heritage, the different, you know, like the sateen and the blood wood and, and uh, purple heart and the rose wood. This right here, a guy gave me a log, and this is spalted red oak. And then this is regular white oak with, with burl black walnut going around it. That's really neat. Can you tell us a little bit about the process? What's the process from the minute that you get the piece of wood out of the mill until you put it on the shelf at Box Elders? What's the process? The process okay, first I make the cross, mm -hmm. and I made the cross out of oak, and then I decide what I want to inlay it with. Do you hand carve it, or do you actually have one of those... Um, table saw? Yep. Table yeah, table saw. saw. Okay. And uh, I can hand carve it. Nice. And, uh, but when you have a table saw, it sure makes things nicer. <laughs> right. <laughs> and a little then, bit more efficient. And then what I do is I take the pieces and, I, and I, I carve them out in the center with the table saw. I run it through a dado blade or I run it through a number of times until I get a nice, like this, this is probably what, three quarters of an inch by a quarter of an inch deep. And then I set the pieces in, glue them, clamp them. And then I go and I, I'll start laminating the outside. And then as each process is done, I sand it off. And then uh, 
and then finish sand it. I turn it, I put a number on it, and I mark it, and I cut a, I cut a wedge out so people can hang it. I don't, only, this, this is the only one I have that uh, has got a, it's got, uh, I forget what you call them, it's a sawtooth hook okay. hanger on the back, but but this 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 keeps it very very simple really, and I just I I I want it to be crude and fine at the same time. Yeah, I like the that cross balance. Is I not like a that pleasant, contrast. It was not a pleasant thing for our Lord to go through, and but yet the beauty of it all and stuff. I try to portray that in the wood. So is every one of them authentic? Do you ever make the same one, or are they all completely different? Well, these like this, they're generally all different to a certain degree. This one here is just a basic, I use different wood for inlay, so none of them are the same, but yet, mm -hmm. but this is pretty much the same style. Okay. Now this here, that is, that's black ash, and I just, I notch the center out, and then I, and I inlay it, and I, and I, and I'll play with the colors. And sometimes I get it right on, and sometimes I don't, but, you know, wood always looks good pretty much, so. But let's talk a little bit about the ends to the means. What purpose does this serve for you? Is this a coping mechanism for you? Is this um, purely an aesthetic endeavor? Why don't you share a little bit about that with us? I really enjoy it because it, I'm by myself and I can do exactly, I can, I can take a piece and do it exactly the way I want to do it. And uh, for years in, in, in my profession as a carpenter and cabinet maker, uh, you always have to do everything to spec with plus or minus whatever mm -hmm. on your dimensions and and this gives me the freedom to make a mistake and then take it to the next level a lot of times a, a mistake is a good thing right because it takes you somewhere else and and so you learn from it and uh, that's the fun part that's of really it. an area of growth for you it provides that opportunity for personal growth and expression yeah yeah let's talk a little bit about your role as an artist how do you view your role in the community what is it about being an artist and um, distributing your crosses that contributes to the art community in Fergus Falls well the thing with the crosses you know not the table so much but with the crosses it's pretty much the Christians I know yeah I've, I've given some away and uh, and it's something we have in common. It's common ground, and it's and it was the greatest thing that was ever done, and it was done by our Lord because He loves us, and that's what I want to approach portray with this. And it would be nice to make a living at it, but I don't know. And it, but it but it's still something I I I, I love to do it and. Uh, would you go as far as to say that this is um, a sort of religious conviction for you to put these out into the community and to spread that message? I don't know if it's a religious conviction. I, I feel the freedom to do it. Almost your offering? Yeah. Your personal offering? Yeah, it, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Okay. You know, it's, it's not a thing where I, I worship the cross. It's not that right. kind of a thing. It's, right. It's... I've got a personal relationship with with uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, and and this is this is this is just a gift He's given me, and I just you know, and I feel like sure, you know, this is going to benefit people, and and I enjoy doing it, and I don't get into figuring it out that much. I just like to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for spending time with us today at Area Artist Showcase. Again, this is Laird Rice at Box Elder. The purpose of this show is to emphasize the importance and support the contributions of the local art community in Fergus Falls. I love this town. I, love, I think the art scene is really, really cool. And the, the whole town, I love this town. Or, uh, I've been here 20 years now, and it's my home. There were two sisters came walking down the street. Oh, the wind and the rain. And the one behind pushed the other one in crowd.
pushed her in the water to drown. Oh, the wind and the rain, well, they watched her as she floated down, crying, oh, the dreadful wind and the rain. Rode her till she came to a miller's pond. Oh, the wind and the rain, cried, father, oh, father, there swims a swan. Chicago, August 1st, 1990, and I went to Mole Lake Indian Reservation for a bluegrass festival. And it's up by Green Bay, Wisconsin, and decided to roll over to Otter Tail County and visit some friends and just kicking around on the road and ended up staying here. The car broke down and been here ever since. This is an old Elizabeth Cotton song. I probably heard it from the same guys, I don't know. <laughs> this is a, this old train song. Please. 
Naramani. Thank you for watching Area Artist Showcase. Please tune in next month. Hi, I'm Heidi Naramani, new host of Area Artist Showcase. Are you a local artist who would like an opportunity to present your work to the community? Well, Peg Access and Box Elder Gifts would like to present you with that opportunity. If you're interested, please give us a call at 218-739-1027 or send an email to info at pegaccess.com. We'll be waiting for your contact. Hope to hear from you soon.